Okay, in this uh, video, we're gonna be doing Calc AB problem set number three. Um, there's a link to the problems in the description and a link to a play set, uh, a play play set, playlist of um, all the problem sets. Uh, anyway, let's do the problems. I'm better at that than I am at talking. Uh, all right, so think of the limit definition of the derivative to evaluate each of the following limits. Uh, all right, so we have the limit as x approaches pi over six cosine of x minus cosine of pi over six over x minus pi over six. This reminds me, of one version of the limit definition. So the version that it reminds me of is f prime of a is limit as x approaches a, f of x minus f of a over x minus a. It's just that slope formula, but then you're taking the limit as x approaches a. Um, it's a really important one. It comes up, these kinds of limits show up. And when you look at them as just limits, you're like, how am I ever gonna do this? And then you realize like, oh, it's just the derivative. That's what we're getting at here. It's a special type of problem where the way that you actually evaluate it is by doing a derivative. So I need to figure out what f of x is. Well, it should just be uh, the first thing that I see. So I'm thinking f of x is cosine. Let's just do that. So I'm trying to find the derivative of cosine. Well, I know the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Um, and I want the derivative at x equals pi over six, because that's where we're uh, finding the limit. So I'm trying to find f prime of pi over six. So I want f prime of pi over six is the negative sine of pi over six. Sine of pi over six is one half, so it's just negative one half. All right, for the next one, it looks a little bit different. We have that limit as h approaches zero. I would say in calculus, when you see a limit as h approaches zero, you should immediately think definition of the derivative. Um, so this is going to be uh, f prime of a is the limit as h approaches zero, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So what's the function? What's the derivative? And where are we evaluating it? Well, the function, uh, the first thing you're looking at is f of a plus h. So this is f of a plus h, which means the function must be tangent. So the function is tangent. The derivative of tangent we know is secant squared. And then we need to know what we're evaluating this thing at. But, you know, it's pretty clear that a from either f of a plus h or f of a is pi over 4. a is pi over 4. So we're trying to find f prime of pi over 4. So f prime of pi over 4 is secant squared of pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Uh, the reciprocal of that is just root 2, um, or 2 over root 2, but you can simplify it. Um, so it's root 2, and then uh, I need to square that. So root 2 squared is 2. All right, that's that problem. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, the next one. Given dy dx is 3x squared plus 2y, y is equal to f of x, and f of negative 3 equals 4, write the line tangent to y equals f of x at x equals negative 3. All right, so this is a pretty straightforward problem. Don't freak out when the derivatives that you're given have x's and y's in that in them. That's a, an implicit relationship, and you will learn a lot about that as it goes as the year goes on. Just for now, you just evaluate, right? So we know to find dy dx. We do such that, and then the whole ordered pair. So such that negative three four, and replace every x with negative three, every y with four. That's really all you have to do. Um, so this is twenty seven plus eight, so thirty five. Um, and then our tangent line, we're using point slope form. So we are gonna have y minus four equals 35, the quantity x plus three. Pretty good problem. All right, let's look at the next one. Find y prime for each of the following. So uh, we have uh, y equals the quantity five x to the fourth minus two times the quantity two x plus three, that's a product rule. Then we have y equals x squared plus one over x minus four, that's gonna be a quotient rule. And then we have y equals x squared cosine of x, that's gonna be another product rule. So we're doing product, quotient, product. It's always nice to like just look at a problem and be like, I, I know what I would do and then maybe not do it if you're fully confident. But anyway, here goes. Um, so for a, y prime is, we're gonna do first, derivative of the second, which is two, plus second, which is two x plus three, derivative of the first, which is 20 x cubed. Uh, and then, I don't know, simplify, I guess. There's really not much simplifying you can do here. Uh, I did it and I got 50x to the fourth plus 60x cubed minus four. I don't remember if I checked that on a calculator. So hopefully that's right. All right, for B, uh, we're doing the quotient rule, right? So the quotient rule is gonna be bottom derivative of the top, which is two x minus top, which is x minus x squared plus one, derivative of the bottom, which is one, all over the bottom squared. It's easy to get lost in it. So I've color coded these. So even if my words aren't making sense, you should be able to like follow that. Um, and then you simplify the numerator. You never want to expand the denominator. Do not expand denominators. 
when you use the quotient rule, I can't stress that enough. It drives me crazy when people do it. I got x squared minus 8x minus 1 um, all over the quantity x minus 4 squared, and I don't want to see that expanded. All right, for the next one, uh, we're doing the product rule again because it's a product. That's why you do the product rule. It's easy to identify. Um, so we're going to do first, which is x squared. Derivative of the second is negative sine of x. So you really got to remember those derivatives. Uh, they were at the end of, I think, the last problem set. Um, make sure you have them memorized because it's just an assumption that you have them memorized. Uh, this doesn't really clean up very much, uh, so I'm not going to clean it up at all. I mean, you can like take out an, you could take out an x if you wanted to. I don't think that's worth it. I'm going to rearrange it because of that like I don't like to have the negative sign like in the middle up front there. Um, so I'm going to write two x cosine of x minus x squared sine of x. Um, but there's a lot of ways you could write that and, and be happy about it. Okay, so that is problem set number three. Uh, I hope this was helpful and good luck.